Hello, a pleasant good day to everyone, and welcome to the MedGuru CDB YouTube channel. For this video, we're going to go over some must-know toxicology pearls and antidotes. So let's quickly go over some things which we anticipate, which every student and physician should know regarding specific toxicities and their corresponding antidotes. So let's start with heparin toxicity. The drug of choice for the treatment of heparin toxicity or heparin overdose is protamine sulfate. So heparin toxicity is treated with protamine sulfate. Benzodiazepine toxicity, for example, diazepam toxicity or an overdose with benzodiazepines such as diazepam or alprazolam. The drug of choice, the antidote, is flumazenil. So benzodiazepine toxicity is treated with flumazenil. Now what about opioid or narcotic overdose? Now opioid or narcotic overdose is treated with naloxone. Now, just some tips in case they give you cases. So you would have an opioid poppy addict or a patient who's probably maintained on morphine, such as someone who's a terminally ill cancer patient who might be maintained on morphine as a form of analgesia. And on physical exam, you would usually see the toxidrome of opioid toxicity, which presents with the pinpoint pupils and the low respiratory rate. So reminder, opioid or narcotic overdose is treated with naloxone. Now, what about iron toxicity? The drug of choice is deferoxamine. Iron toxicity is treated with deferoxamine. Now, clinical cases to anticipate for iron toxicity. You might encounter a case where someone presents with hemochromatosis or a patient who has a blood dyscrasia, which would warrant multiple blood transfusions. So iron toxicity is treated with diferoxamine. Now, what about lead toxicity? Lead toxicity is treated with Edda and or dimer caprol. Now, to anticipate a case of lead toxicity, don't forget common telltale signs in the history which would lead to lead toxicity. So number one, on physical exam, the patient might have lead lines or the presence of your wrist drop. Next is your mercury poisoning, which is treated also with dimer caprol. So mercury poisoning is treated with dimer caprol. Now, <clears throat> the next heavy metal poisoning is your arsenic poisoning. This is also treated with dimer caprol. Now, going back to the mercury poisoning I mentioned earlier, don't forget chronic mercury poisoning. This is called Minamata disease. So chronic mercury poisoning is also known as Mina, Minamata disease. Now, what about copper toxicity? So copper toxicity can be treated with penicillamine and don't forget Wilson's disease, which is a disease which involves copper metabolism and low seroluplasmin levels, is also treated with penicillamine. Now, next antidote which we should know is when you deal with a patient with organophosphate poisoning or insecticide poisoning. So example, malathion, parathion, or they might give you a case vignette of a farmer who's exposed to pesticides. Treatment of choice, 
is atropine and your backup drug is pralidoxime. Organophosphate poisoning or insecticide poisoning is treated with atropine and your antidote is pralidoxime. So you can give first line atropine and your backup antidote is pralidoxime. Now what is pralidoxime? This is also known as 2PAM. So what does PAM or PAM stand for? It stands for pyridine, aldoxime, methyl chloride. So pralidoxime, also known as 2PAM, is actually biochemically 2-pyridine, aldoxime, methyl chloride. Now what about something we might encounter commonly in a country which is prevalent in patients with pulmonary tuberculosis. That would be overdose or toxicity with your isoniazid. Now, always remember that isoniazid will inhibit or compete with the absorption of vitamin B6 or pyridoxine. And this is the rationale why INH toxicity is treated with pyridoxine or vitamin B6. Now, some other must-knows. The toxic metabolite which is responsible for the toxicity is acetylhydrazine. So in INH toxicity or INH overdose, the toxic metabolite is acetylhydrazine. Now, next is acetaminophen toxicity. So if you have an overdose of acetaminophen or paracetamol, the antidote or the drug of choice is acetylcysteine. This is a common mucolytic, so acetylcysteine or N-acetylcysteine. The treatment for acetaminophen or paracetamol toxicity. Now, what is the specific toxic metabolite in acetaminophen toxicity? This is commonly known as NAPB. QI or NAPBQ. So this stands for N acetyl P benzoquinone imine. N acetyl P benzoquinone imine. This is NAPBQI. This is the toxic metabolite in paracetamol or acetaminophen toxicity. Now, friendly tip pathology. In acetaminophen toxicity, there is a specific fulminant hepatic failure, which is microscopically described as centrilobular hepatic necrosis. This usually affects zone 3 in your hepatic lobule because this is the area which is away from the hepatic vein and lacks oxygen. So this is centrilobular hepatic necrosis. Now, what about toxicity from fibrinolytics, such as RTPA, streptokinase, just to mention a few. If you have overdose with your fibrinolytics, the antidote is your famous tranexamic acid or aminocaproic acid. <clears throat> so the antidote for fibrinolytic toxicity is tranexamic acid or amino caproic acid. Now, what about the antihypertensive sodium nitroprusside? Sodium nitroprusside is a very good drug to give during hypertensive emergencies. It causes dilatation of both the arteries and the arterioles. However, one side effect aside from rapid or sudden hypotension or drop in the blood pressure is your cyanide toxicity. So sodium nitroprusside is associated with cyanide toxicity. Now let's go back to the basics. Always remember cyanide toxicity, okay? The rationale behind cyanide toxicity. Cyanide blocks specifically complex four of the electron transport chain. And this would be the enzyme cytochrome oxidase. 
So cyanide blocks complex four of the electron transport chain, which is the enzyme cytochrome oxidase. Now the antidote for sodium nitroprusside, cyanide toxicity is your sodium thiosulfate. Now what about digoxine induced arrhythmias? The antidote would be lidocaine. So digoxine induced arrhythmia, the antidote is lidocaine. But don't forget if it's digoxine or digitalis toxicity, then you give your digitalis fragments or your digibine. Now what about an overdose with beta blockers? The drug of choice or the antidote is glucagon. What about calcium channel blocker overdose? The antidote is also glucagon. Now what about an overdose with clonidine? So you have a centrally acting antihypertensive, which is clonidine. Overdose, you give naloxone. Now what about an overdose with your oral hypoglycemic agent, your sulfonylureas? Treatment antidote is ocreotide. What about Wernix encephalopathy? So the treatment is thiamine. Valproic acid, the treatment is carnitine. So the antidote for valproic acid toxicity is carnitine. For a patient with overdose or toxicity with aspirin, you give them sodium bicarbonate. Methanol overdose, antidote is ethanol. Ethylene glycol overdose. So ethylene glycol is usually seen in antifreeze. Drug of choice is fomipizole. And you can also use ethanol in the treatment of ethanol glycol overdose. There are some references that state that both methanol and ethylene glycol poisoning can be treated with fomipizole. Now, what is fomipizole? This is a competitive inhibitor of alcohol dehydrogenase. Fomipizole is a competitive inhibitor of alcohol dehydrogenase. So please don't confuse fomipizole with your proton pump inhibitors. It sounds like one, but it is not. This is a competitive inhibitor of alcohol dehydrogenase. So what is the significance of alcohol dehydrogenase? This is the enzyme that catalyzes the oxidation of ethanol to the metabolite acetaldehyde. So the toxicity from ethanol actually arises from the metabolite acetaldehyde. So what is alcohol dehydrogenase? This is the enzyme that catalyzes the oxidation of ethanol to acetaldehyde. Now, what about malignant hyperthermia? Now, some tips to bring with you to the exam. Malignant hyperthermia is usually caused by either succinylcholine or your, what drug? Succinylcholine or halothane. So the two anesthetics which are associated with malignant hyperthermia is succinylcholine and halothane. Treatment is the calcium channel blocker dantrolene. Now what about methotrexate toxicity? Now methotrexate is an antineoplastic. It's also classified as a DMARD, a disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug which can be used in conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and can also be used in psoriasis. So methotrexate will inhibit the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. And to decrease the toxicity, you can give leucoverin, which is actually folinic acid. Now next is the antineoplastics cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide. Now both these antineoplastics are notorious for hemorrhagic cystitis. 
Now, tip: the toxic metabolite responsible for the hemorrhage or the hemorrhagic cystitis is acrolein. So the toxic metabolite responsible for hemorrhagic cystitis is acrolein. And this is associated with the antineoplastic cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide. Now, how do you treat cyclophosphamide or iphosphamide hemorrhagic cystitis? You give MESNA. Now, MESNA stands for mercaptoethane sulfonate. So, MESNA stands for mercaptoethane sulfonate. Now, what about doxorubicin or downorubicin? This antineoplastic is notorious for causing cardiac toxicity. Doxorubicin or downorubicin is notorious for cardiac toxicity. Now, the exact mechanism behind the toxicity with doxorubicin is actually mediated by the enzyme topoisomerase 2B. So topoisomerase 2B mediates cardiac toxicity. Now, the antidote for doxorubicin toxicity is dexrazoxane. So the antidote for doxorubicin toxicity is dexrazoxane. Now, what is considered to be the most cardiotoxic local anesthetic? It is bupi vacane. So the most cardiotoxic local anesthetic is bupi vacane. And the side effect of methamphetamines is dilated cardiomyopathy. So the side effect of methamphetamines is dilated cardiomyopathy. Toxicity with theophylline or caffeine treat with the beta blocker esmolol. So the antidote for theophylline or caffeine toxicity is esmolol. And winding down the antidote for atropine toxicity, we give the anticholinergic physiostigmine. So the antidote for atropine toxicity is physiostigmine. And magnesium sulfate toxicity. You would anticipate a case of eclampsia. So don't forget the anticonvulsant of choice. In a woman with eclampsia would be magnesium sulfate. And the manifestations of toxicity, you have four things to monitor. Your mnemonics here is burp. So don't forget, burp. So first, we have the decrease in the blood pressure, decrease in the urine output, decrease in the respiratory rate, and the absence of the patellar reflex. These are the four signs of magnesium sulfate toxicity. Hypotension, or decrease in the blood pressure, decrease urine output, decrease in the respiratory rate, and the loss or the absence of the patellar reflex. Now, treatment antidote for magnesium sulfate toxicity is calcium gluconate. And antidote or treatment of anaphylactic shock, drug of choice is epinephrine. So with the delusion of 1 is to 1,000, and you give it subcutaneously, 0.5 to 1 ml of 1 is to 1,000 delusion epinephrine given subcutaneously for the treatment of anaphylactic shock.